So, First Chronicles chapter 13, um, you, can look, you can look at that up in your Bibles. Please don't put it up on the screens, because I want them to pull out their phones or their... And that's fine, if you have a tablet, a phone or something, pull it out. First Chronicles, the Old Testament. First Chronicles chapter 13. We're going to be reading several verses, but I want to read kind of like the beginning in chapter 13, verse 1. It says, David conferred with each of his officers, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds... He then said to the whole assembly of Israel, if it seems good to you, say that, say, listen to this. He, he said, he first, com, he went to the commanders, his officials. He went to everybody and then he goes to the people of Israel. He goes to the people of Israel and he says, if it seems good to you. I think there's something to this because David was one that loved the presence of God. David was one that needed to be in the presence of God. I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. Jump with me real quickly to Psalm chapter 16, verse 11. Psalm 16, 11, and it says this. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with, your, with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Let me say that again. He says, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. That's David speaking. So he enjoyed the presence of God. He lived. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. That means that he was close to God. And because he was close to God, he loved God. And he wanted to be in God's presence. You with me? So David now here is talking about bringing the ark back. What did the ark of God represent? It represented the presence of God. The ark of the covenant was where Moses got, God told him to make a tabernacle with the ark of the covenant. Why? Because, because that's where God's presence would dwell. It, it was kind of like uh, having God there with them in a box. We don't need that because when Jesus died, the Bible says the veil was torn in two. And now we can enter in God's presence. We don't need a box. We don't need anything. We know that we can enter in God's presence anytime we want. Okay, trying to give you guys the backstory. So David, he confers with his officials. He confers with his, with the people of Israel. And then he says this, and if it is the will of the Lord, our God, let us send word far and wide to the rest of our people throughout the territories of Israel and also to the priests and Levites who are with them in their towns and pasture lands to so come and join us. Here it is, verse 3. This is 1 Chronicles 13, 3. Let us bring the ark of our God back to us. For we did not inquire of it during the reign of Saul. In other words, we weren't seeking God's presence when King Saul was in charge. But now that I'm in charge, we need, we need God's presence back. You with me? L let me say it like this. We're in a series of prayer. You can't pray to God without God's presence. You can't see God. And this is why some of us, we're questioning why our prayers aren't answered. Because God's not there. I want God's presence so much, but God's not there. Why is God not there? Because something has happened with me and God's presence. I'm going to get into it. Please bring my time down. You just added more time. Don't do that to me because you know I'll keep going. Bring it down to 28 minutes, please. Let us bring back the ark of God back. Let us bring the ark of God back to us. Say to us. In other words, they were saying, I want God's presence back. It's been away, and I can't live without the presence of God. You know what happens? There's two types of death. There's physical death, and there's spiritual death. And there's a lot of walking dead people walking around. There's a lot of people walking dead walking around. You, do you understand that? That they're alive physically, but spiritually they're dead. And my prayer is that today you'll become alive physically and spiritually. That you'll understand that God has a purpose for your life. And you can no longer go without the presence of God. This is not just like, oh, I can come to church once, once in a while and, and come and listen to preaching and, and pray a little bit. No, 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 no. If I want God's presence, I have to dwell in his presence. And so David says, hey, he confers with all these people. But he doesn't confer with God. Not every good thing is a God thing. Not because you think, oh, this is good. This is, I mean, this is going to be good for the church is a God thing. 
Maybe you want it, but God doesn't. I'm going to force this person to come to church with me. That's a good thing, but is it a God thing? Because you force somebody, then they're going to hate being here. Now, your kids are a different story. As long as you're under my roof, because the Bible says instruct, train up a child in the ways of the Lord, and when they're older, they will not depart. So if I'm not training them, then parent, you're the problem, not the child. If you're letting your kid do whatever they want, you're the problem, not them. The kid's going to do whatever they want unless the parent puts them in, in their place. I grew up in a different era where we whipped our kids and we were whipped. My dad is here, boy. He took some branches sometimes. He's going to act like we ne- My mom used to say, I never did that to you. I'm like, Grandma, you be lying in the house of the Lord. Don't be lying in God's house. But it taught us something. It taught us to respect. And you know what kids have lost today? Respect. They don't respect their elders. They don't respect people. And then, and then here's what I'll get. Pastor, can you pray for my child? No, how about you discipline your child? And then I'll pray for them. Here, let me help some of you single parents. Just because they're lacking one parent doesn't mean you're going to let them get away with the world. Oh, it's just they don't have a father. So? Whip them like they do. <laughs> Pastor, you don't, I, I, they beat me when I grew up. I'm not telling you to beat them, but whip them. Discipline them. People are looking at me like funny, like whip them? Yes. You all, there's a scripture in Proverbs that says, a, a father that loves their child does not spare the rod. What is a rod? You know what a rod is? That's a stick. Some of you, oh, that's abuse. Where are my social workers in here? Come talk to me after work. They're at the second service. So watch this. Let us bring back the ark of God. Let us bring the ark of God back to us. I said, where's my wife? She, she keeps me in line sometimes. Watch this. So David wants to bring the ark of God back. King David had a desire to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to Israel because David understood what it meant to be in the presence of God, and he never wanted to be away from his presence. It's vital to me, as the pastor of this house, that you understand that we are seeking after the presence of God. We are not a seeker-friendly church. You know what a seeker-friendly church is? Ones that want to make it easy for you to come in here and not feel uncomfortable. That's what a secret, a secret friendly church is where we don't speak in tongues. We, we don't raise our hands. We don't get loud because I, I don't want to scare the unbeliever. No, I want you to know what the true power of God is. So if I got to speak in tongues and I got to prophesy and I got to cast out a devil, I'm going to do it. Why? If Jesus did it and he didn't care. Oh, we're going to cast out some devils here. Don't get scared. Because the devil's real. And I'm okay. I want to be a five-fold ministry. I don't just be one type of ministry. Oh, we're going to bring people and that's it. No, I want the presence and the power and the anointing and the... I want God in his house. You with me? So he knew what it meant. And here's what the ark of God represented. The ark of God represented the immediate presence and glory of God. Now watch. It represented the immediate and the, gl- the immediate presence and the glory of God. That's why David wanted it. He needed God's presence. Why? He wanted to know that where God is, I'm going to be successful. Where God's presence is, I- everything's going to be all right. Here's what happens. When they tell you, you don't need anybody. You could do it yourself. Be careful. You don't need nobody. You're a single mom. You could do it without. You don't need a man. Watch out. You don't need no man. You don't need no woman. You can do it yourself. And then the enemy creeps in. Because how did he get Eve by herself? (laughs) David wanted the Ark of the Covenant. He wanted God's presence with him. David considered it a high priority to bring the Ark of God out of obscurity and back to Jerusalem into prominence. David wanted... Israel to be alive with a sense of the near presence and glory of God. And that's my prayer at CWC. That we're so on fire 
that people will call the fire department because they think this building's on fire. I'm praying that. Lord, let them call the fire department. The fire department shows up. We, we got a, 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 a 9-11 call that it's on fire. Yes, it is. Where? So we could put it out. No, you ain't putting this thing out because it's inside me. And if it's inside me, it's inside you. And we need the presence of God so much so, especially in this crazy world that we're living in. And David understood this. Now, I got to go on verse, verse 9. Let's jump to verse 9 because he's, he tells you we're going to bring it up from here and there. And, and let me read verse 6 and 7, though. It says, David and all Israel went to Bala of Judah to bring up from there the ark of the Lord who is enthroned between the cherubim. The ark is called by the name. Now, here's verse 7. They moved the ark of God from Abinadab's house on a new cart. So they moved it. Now there was laws as to who can move this ark and who could not touch it. God had called the Levites to be the only ones that could transport and move the ark of God. The Levites were the priests. Okay? God said these are the only ones that can touch the ark. These are the only ones that can move the ark. No one else. But let me take you back to what David did. In verse 1 of chapter 13, it says, David conferred with each of his officers, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. He then said to the whole assembly of Israel, if it seems good to you. He conferred with everybody else but God. It was a good thing. It wasn't a God thing. I need God's presence so much so, but instead of me going to God, I'm going to people. And I'm expecting people to tell me what God only can tell me. Stop going to people and asking them what is God saying to you about me. And how about you go to God's presence yourself and hear from God directly so that he can help you. David conferred with everybody else but God. David consulted with the captains and every leader and even the people, if it's good to you. Listen, can I tell you something? Don't get offended with me. I don't care if it's not good to you what I'm doing. I really don't care with a smile on my face. I don't like what Pastor Ruben's doing. Good. I don't care what you think because I'm not conferring with you. I'm conferring with him. And if he tells me we are going after, you're going to go after my presence. You're going to seek me. You're going to do my will. That's all I care about. I'm not here to people please. This is why we're not a seeker friendly church. That when you come in here it's like, we love you. But I don't care if you like what we're doing. I don't like that song. Good, it's not about you. We're worshiping Jesus. You shouldn't like that song. I don't like some of the songs we're doing and I'm like, whatever. It's not about me, Lord. <laughs> David consult with every, can I say this? Stop consulting with everybody and start consulting with God. You want your prayers to start working? Stop consulting with everybody else. And not saying that you shouldn't have spiritual advisors and people around you that can help guide you, but not over God. You're trying to go over, oh, no, I don't need. You need God's presence. David took the counsel with each other, but never with the Lord. Be careful when making decisions that you consult with God before you do with anyone else. It's good to have wise counsel, but never above the counsel of the Lord. The Lord had given them instruction in the past on how to move it, right? But they did not obey the commands. Now watch what happens in verse 9. But when they arrived at the threshing floor of Nacon, the oxen stumbled. They had put the ark of God on, the, on this oxen, this cow. And it had a cart. And so the oxen stumbled. Why? Because when you're out of the will of God, when you're out of the will of God, you'll stumble. When you're doing things that God is not asking, you'll stumble. Be careful when you stumble because the next step is you're going to fall. The oxen stumbled. Why? Because a good thing is not always a God thing. And here's what happened. Oh my gosh, here's the moral of my story here. The oxen stumbled and Uzzah Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark. I'm going to help you here. 
Uzzah put out his hand to steady the ark. In other words, that was a good thing. He didn't want the ark of the covenant to fall. He, re- he was like, no, I, I don't want it to fall. I'm going to put my hand out. Guess what happens? It says here in verse 10, then the Lord's anger ar- was aroused against Uzzah. And he struck him dead because he had laid his hand on the ark. So Uzzah died there in the presence of God. Not every good thing is a God thing. Can I tell you what Uzzah's name means in Hebrew? You ready? It means strength. Uzzah and his brother Ahio, I I'm seeing, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uzzah means strength. His brother Ahio means friendly. That's what his name means in Hebrew. Uzzah means strength. I'm strong. I can hold God's presence. And because you think you're strong and you're trying to hold something that God never told you to touch, I'm going to strike you dead right here. You think you could do it in your own strength? You don't need my presence? I'm going to strike you dead right here. So Uzzah died in the presence. Now watch this. The Bible says he put out his hand. The Hebrew for put out his hand means strength as well. So he thought he can contain the presence of God from falling. Can I tell you, God don't need your help. He don't need you to think, I'm strong enough. I'll do this on my own. This is exactly what Uzzah represented. He thought he could do it on his own. Number one, he was not a Levite. So you went against what God did the first time. The second thing is you were not supposed to touch that thing because you're not a Levite. And you touched it anyways. Why? Because you, you got caught up in your name. You got caught up in your title. You got caught up in who you think you are. I'm a strong man. I'm a strong woman. I don't need anybody. I'm going to do this all on my own. And God says, let me show you my power. Uzzah means strength. Can I say this? The Bible says that when he died there, it says now, David was now afraid of God, and he asked, how can I ever bring the ark of God back into my care? Verse 12, verse 13. So David did not move the ark into the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom of Gath. So David got fearful. Why? Because he knew he was out of the will of God. Because I didn't tell you to move my presence. If you just seek me instead of worrying about what other people are saying, then my presence will show up. Uzzah means strength. And so his brother Ahio means friendly. Now watch this. In other words, Uzzah's whose name meant strength put out his hand, which also meant strength. So he thought he could move the ark of God with his own strength. That proved to be faithful for him. Don't you ever think you can do things in your own strength because Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. We need his presence to guide us, to lead us, to strengthen us. I need God's presence every day. The question with me is why did Uzzah get or think that he could touch the ark of God he knew he knew can I tell you what the ark of God was in his house it was in his house it was his father's house it was in Uzzah and Ahio's house Uzzah means strength Ahio means familiar So Uzzah got familiar with the presence of God. And when you get familiar with anybody, you start disrespecting them. Somebody asked me one time, why can't I just call you by your name? Why can't I just call you Reuben? I said, because I'm not your friend. I'm your spiritual advisor. I'm not your bro. People call me bro. You know, that's really disrespectful as a pastor. Somebody call you bro. You know why? Because it's disrespectful. Because it's unhonorable. It's dishonorable. I'm not anybody's friend here. I'm your spiritual advisor. My wife is not your friend. We're your spiritual advisors. We're not your bro and your sis and hey, Cindy, hey, Reuben. That's disrespectful. And when that person asked me that, I said, can I, can I tell you this? What do you call your dad who you don't see all the time? Because he didn't have a relationship with dad. He, his dad, he was more of a father to his own dad. You know what he said? I call him dad. I said, Why? Why do you call him dad? Oh, it's called honor. You don't call him by his first name. 
If I was to call my dad by my first name, first of all, my dad at 85 would smack me. But it's disrespectful. It's dishonorable. And you may not like me, but you better honor the office that I am in as pastor. And the office that my wife is in as pastor. We're not people's friends. When you get familiar, that's what happens. And people lose sight of that. And Uzzah got familiar with the presence of God. And he says, ah, with my own strength, I'm going to touch the ark. And God killed him right there. Say with me, familiar. He got familiar because God's presence was in his house. Can I say it's so easy to get familiar with God when you come here and you feel his presence and then you go home and it's just like a routine. You end up getting familiar and you end up losing respect and honor for God's presence. Can I tell you, never lose respect and honor for God's presence in his house. Never lose respect and honor for God. 2 Samuel 6.3 says this, 2 Samuel 6.3. You with me so far? I know it's a different preaching, but 2 Samuel 6.3 says this. It says, they set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahil, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart. Verse, watch this, verse 4. With the ark of God on it, and Ahil was walking in front of it, David and all Israel were celebrating. Now watch this. Uzzah and Ahil were around the ark. They had no business to be around the ark. You know why? Because they weren't Levites. But Ahil was in front of it. What does Ahil's name mean? Friendly. He was familiar. Oh, it's been in my house. I could stand here. Uzzah, it's been in my house. I could stand here. I could do what I want with it. And the moment he puts his hand out, God kills him. I'm not saying God's trying to kill anybody. All I'm saying is do not get familiar with the presence of God. Uzzah erred in thinking he knew all about the ark because it was in his father's house. Don't ever get so familiar with the presence of God that you lose sight of his power. Can I say this? That David in the end was confused. He was angry. He was angry with God and he had no business being angry with God. He should have been angry with himself because he did not confer with God. He did this on his own. It was a good thing. He wanted God's presence, but instead of conferring with God, he conferred with people. So what's the moral of my story? Stop conferring with people and start conferring with God. Stop seeking approval from people stop seeking approval from what everybody else cares about and just why don't you worry about what God cares that's what your approval should be from now watch this in the end it says this in verse verse 13 and 14 it says so David did not move the ark of into the city of David said he took it to the house of Obed Edom now watch this here's what happens here's what happens Obed Edom never asked for it he never asked for it, but watch what happens. In verse 14, the ark of God remained there in Obed-Edom's house for three months. Say with me, three months. And the Lord blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he owned. You want your business to explode? You want your company to explode? You want your, your life to, to be successful? How about you infer and get the presence of God into it? Obed-Edom never asked for it. But because David's mistake, God said, now I'm going to bless somebody else's house. Because Abinadab, unfortunately, him and his family got familiar with my presence. So I'm about to take my presence to somewhere else. Abinadab lost what could have been his because he, got, he let his kids get familiar. So parents, stop letting your kids get familiar. Abinadab got familiar and so did his kids and so Obed Edom was the one that was blessed because of the presence of God so I want to encourage you today don't get familiar don't get familiar God loves you what's interesting is that Obed Edom was a Levite and because he was a Levite the ark was in the proper hands it was in the proper place. This was the family within the tribe of Levi that God commanded to transport and take care of the ark. That's why they were blessed. You want to know why you should be blessed and others not? Because you're of God's family. You should walk into a place knowing if this 
there's 10 people applying for this house, I'm going to get it. Even if they outbid me, it's mine. Why? Because I'm blessed. If I walk into this business and there's 10 other clients there, I'm going to get it. Why? Because I belong to God. If I walk into this job and I'm underqualified and there's 10 other applicants and they're overqualified, I'm going to get it. Why? Because I belong to the family of God. I'm blessed. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed. Come on, I'm blessed. Why? Because of the presence of God. And I don't allow myself to get familiar with the presence of God. So, when you obey God and do not get familiar but honor his presence, you will be blessed. Thank you for watching the CWC YouTube channel. We're so glad you joined us today. And listen, I hope you enjoyed the message. By the way, why don't you subscribe to our channel and invite your family and friends. We are live every Sunday at 11 and 6 p.m. We'd love for you to join us. Hey, listen, once again, thank you for watching and God bless.